Alrighty, Tristan at Truck Lab with you. Short video on the Ford EcoBoost variable camshaft timing solenoids or VCT solenoids. We had a 2019 F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost come in with check engine light, occasional uh, loss of power, and it had a cold start rattle that is usually indicative of the phasers failing or one phaser or more failing. Um, the customer hadn't mentioned the cold start rattle. Uh, we heard it the day after it was dropped off. Anyway, had these two codes stored, P0018 crankshaft to camshaft position correlation bank two sensor A. That is the intake camshaft on the driver's bank. And then a P0021 camshaft a camshaft position timing over advanced bank two. So A, this actually should read intake camshaft position timing over advanced bank two. That is the A camshaft. Anyway, so we, we tested our circuits and everything on the control side and found that those were okay, which I was pretty sure I was gonna find that following the test drive and seeing that the camshaft was moving and responding it was just lazy and this is measuring um, desired minus actual this is the bank 2 intake camshaft and you can see it's varying negative 45.2 degrees to positive 26.4 degrees that's a huge variance this is the bank 1 cam intake camshaft this is much closer to normal uh, engine oil was full and looked clean, although the customer did say that he runs his oil changes out to the reminder light, which tends to be around 10,000 miles. Uh, I highly recommend doing 5,000 mile oil change intervals on everything, and particularly things that are sensitive to oil quality. And the Ford EcoBoost and the five liter uh, the old 5.4s, the old 4.6s, anything that has oil control stuff, Honda, you know, VTEX and all that, just do 5,000. Oil's cheap, filters are cheap, engines and engine repairs are not. Anyway, back to the solenoid. So this is what one looks like all together. This one I pulled the spool valve out of. Uh, it's just got a little spring in there that keeps it where it wants to be when it's off and a little retaining clip. This one I took all the way apart. Sorry. Uh, this is the actual solenoid, which was fine. Uh, the retaining bracket, this sits inside the solenoid that contains the oil. This is very, very similar to the old injection pressure regulators, the IPRs in the power strokes and how it functions. Um, so the, the electromagnetic force moves this guy in there. That's held in with a cap. That then pushes on the spool valve or lets it return. And that's how it controls it. Um, I took my screens off here. Sorry about that. Took the screens off. Now, obviously this is not going back together. It's very much broke, but it was replaced. Um, these are just filter screens for the oil. Uh, the spool valve sits in here and you can see it spans that distance just perfectly or that distance perfectly. Um, and that's what's allowing oil in and out, advancing and retarding the phaser. So inside this middle chamber, is what I assume is an oil control uh, ring of some sort, either allowing, restricting the oil coming in or out. I think it's to help it not bleed down. Uh, I'm not the engineer, so I don't know exactly, but that is what actually caused the failure in the VCT solenoid that had gone bad and was causing the codes and the rattle and all that in this particular truck. So that piece, 
this little piece of that control ring in the failed VCT solenoid had broken off and was sitting in there on the spool valve getting pushed around by oil and it was chewing up and wedging that spool valve up in here and not allowing it to come down uh, and that was the failure in this one and so we replaced all four just we try to look out for our customers with crossover labor and there's a lot of crossover labor to do left bank and right bank so we just went ahead as a precaution and did all four these are pretty cheap parts um, and we told him there was a chance he may still have his cold start rattle um, and we would be getting back in there but I wanted to see if this was going to take care of it and it did so cold start rattle is not always a phaser failure um, next time I do phasers I'll make a video I meant to last time and I, I just lost track of time and didn't get it done um, we are extremely busy so anyway when I do the, the phasers video at some point in the future I'll show you why, why they are failing and why it's very important that you disable your auto start stop and that you do frequent oil changes. That's all for today.